Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another wellbeing panel with Harry and Sally. And I'm Sally, the holistically fit specialist, and over to you, Harry. And I'm Harry, the learning difficulty specialist from down under in Canberra, which is one of the most places. <laughs> and I'm in Melbourne. So today, I thought we could chat about childhood obesity. It's Wow, it's quite scary. Uh, the reason I'm thinking about this topic is the other day, Harry, I was um, Saturday morning sport, you know, down with the kids doing their different activities. And, you know, as you do, you sit there watching the grass grow and watching the games and whatever. And I, I just noticed there was sort of like so many, there was two sorts of kids. There were those that were really active and running around and really sporty. And then there was exactly opposite, you know, sort of um, not into the sport, they're under sufferance, not active, just doing the bare minimum, walking around the ground. And I thought, you know, I do a lot of driving to and from schools with the kids. And I get to see lots of kids in the street, lots of shapes and sizes, and kids are getting bigger this day, uh, these days. I mean, now they're saying that obesity is the new smoking. Like, it's, it's becoming one of the biggest. Why, why, why are they saying that? That's, that's, that's a good quote. I know obesity is new yes. smoking. It, it's one of the highest um, risk factors now in our society, and you know mm. it's it can be preventable of of so many illnesses and diseases. I mean, in the in the UK and in Australia and in America, a quarter of our kids and adolescents are overweight or obese. Like that's one in four. And the projection is in 2020 in Australia, they're, they're saying it'll be at least a third of kids and 80% of adults. Like, that's huge. That's only two years away. Crazy stuff. Yeah, and, and, and in children, the, um, the risk is, is that uh, if you have childhood obesity, you, you're, gonna, you're going to get cardiovascular disease later on in life. It amplifies the risk of a whole lot of those degenerative diseases of aging that are avoidable. Yeah, totally. A, a third of chronic disease is because of being physically inactive. A third of it. And the leading diseases are coronary heart disease, dementia, diabetes, bowel cancer, and stroke. And a third of these are caused just by being inactive. And mm, at, it's at, least, at least. And a lot of that is, is, is um, you know, preventable, of course. So... You know, I notice that when I go in to buy a shirt, for instance, and yeah. just kind of a personal story, yep. I have to always get the small men's. I'm, I'm not small. Yeah. I have to get the small men's because everything else sits on me like a, like a tent. Oh, that's, that's like when we were in Hawaii. I went in to get a yeah. pair of jeans and I thought, oh, look, I'll get a size 8 and a size 10 because I'm normally a size 8. And then I put on the 10. It was way too big. So I went into the 8. I'm thinking... Is, is something wrong? Like, is this marked incorrectly? I went down to a four, like yeah. an, an eight here, an eight yep. ten. And I'm just thinking, so a size 10 was huge. So imagine a size 12 or 14. So the scaling is, you're so right, Harry. Our clothing is adjusting to make us not feel so bad. So you're still in a 10, but you're actually so much bigger. Well, it's not, I don't think it's to, to make, make you feel less bad. I think it's because the size ranges have been adjusted yeah. for, the, for the expanding waistlines. So I would have been medium before, but I'm yeah. really medium now because everybody else's waistlines have got bigger. Wow. Same oh. for kids. Yeah, and that's the thing with kids. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. They're just getting bigger and bigger, and it's really worrying me. And then I looked up some information that, one in three kids, one in three are physically active every day. Like, that's only like 30%. And children spend more than seven and a half hours a day in front of a screen. So that's TV, video games, computer, etc. I mean, seven and a half hours out of the day, if you spend like, say, 10 hours sleeping, it doesn't leave much else. And, um, and more than 80% of adolescents don't have enough physical activity to meet the guidelines for youth. And the guidelines are very meager. I think it's like 30 minutes or maybe 60 minutes a day, but 80% aren't meeting. I mean, one of the things that worries me, um, and Gordon, Ram Gordon Ramsay's talked about this, yep. and he's actually quite passionate about good lifestyle. Yeah. He's appalled, as I am, that many apartment blocks are going up with, without either a kitchen or a dining room. 
And so you put your you put your TV dinner in the microwave and then you sit in front of the screen and, and that's your family time. So it's doing a whole lot of things wrong. Wow, that is so bad on many levels. One, because you're not having that family more bonding time. And two, your digestion. When you're eating in front of the TV, your body reacts to what you're watching. And there's like the news, there's no such thing as good news. It's all bad news. So that's one of the worst things to do is watch the news while you're eating because it's just horror stories and you, your gut and everything is reacting to it. So your digestion isn't working efficiently. Whoa. And, and I was reading in the Weekend Australian about a planner talking about Melbourne. And he said, basically, the planning's out of control in Melbourne. Mm. It's just in the hands of the developers. So yes. a lot of high rises are going up. Yes. But is there access to outdoor space? Yeah, there are these guidelines for kids, but where are they supposed to play? Yeah, yeah, I was reading something actually about that. And they were saying, I think it's um, one in five have decent access to a park or something. But the yeah. same number... Uh, they, they have access to gyms. So there are alternatives, although usually gyms are from teenagers upwards, but you can, in some cases, go with parents. But otherwise, you have to do organised paying activities, like some sort of sports you know, from little kids upwards. If so, so let me check my maths. One in five have access to a park. Yeah. One in five have access to a gym. That's two in five, which is 40% of kids. Yeah. That leaves 60%. Yeah, yeah. Relying on mum's taxi. Yeah. Well, school. But then, once again, it's the quality of the sport. I think I was saying to you earlier that, you know, it's not just being physically active. It's about having that cardio aspect to being being aerobic as yeah. well. I mean, walking, yes, walking is absolutely up there. But as a kid, you know, you still have to manage from any age what goes in has to be less than what goes out. So whatever you're eating, your calorie intake has to be less than the amount of calories you're expending being active. And this is a real worry that it's not only are we not doing enough, we're not being fit enough either. So not cardio fit. And um, get yeah, you, just you just mentioned calories there, Sal. Yes. And I'm thinking there's another S word, not Sally, but I'm thinking <laughs> sugar. Whoa. I'm thinking what the Americans would call soda. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Soft drink, soda, sugar, so bad. Yeah. And that's another, that's up there with obesity being the new smoking as another killer. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's so bad. so bad. Low fat makes you fat because of the sugar. Yeah. There you go. There's a... I like that. <laughs> Try like that, Harry. <laughs> I like, I'll write that down. Low fat makes you fat. <laughs> And also in the school tuck shops. So, you know, school tuck shops, I know at one of our schools still has soft drink in there, readily available. And did, did you get in touch with Jamie? Oh, I sent a little um, thingy on someone on LinkedIn, so we'll wait and see. Yeah, but good. As we were saying before, sugar, sugar is one of the most addictive substances, more addictive than yeah. cocaine. So, yeah. and kids, it's the one thing that kids can have access to from, little, from a young age, parties yeah. onwards. And then in the shops... All these S words are coming out, but uh, <laughs> and they're in, sugar is an empty calorie. Yeah, by that we yeah. mean it's got no nutrition, no little nutritional value. Oh, and it gives you the spiking highs and lows, which just for kids you you can see it when you go to parties, just uh, yeah. you know go high as a kite and then they hit the ground and have their meltdowns. It's shocking. It's shocking. that's right. That's right. Um, so we've talked and and. The kids are sedentary. They're sitting the whole time. You, you said they spend eight hours a day on screens, which is horrific. Yeah, and it's... I, I, I work in an osteopathic clinic, and we see the results of that later on in life. Yeah. But they come in with neck and back problems. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, the neck problems. there, it's, it's terrible and um, hanging over. It's, it's and then there's the walking to school, looking at the smartphone neck again, bend over like that. Yeah, I see that all that you're absolutely spot on. I'm writing that down, the smartphone neck. The word of S's today, smartphone neck. It's so true. And it's so dangerous. I was even picking my son up yesterday and he's ringing me to say, where are you? And I said, across the road on the crossing. So he's literally talking to me, which is the reason he has a phone, so that I can access, yeah. you know, they know where to pick up and whatever. Yeah. But he doesn't yeah. stop at the crossing. He's still talking to me as he's walking across the road. And I'm yelling to him down the phone, stop there's a car there he stops and looks around 
because he's got yeah. these stupid earbuds in and well, so he must have had the phone there. But anyway, you know, distracted. Yeah, yeah. Very dangerous. And last year I was taking the kids to school, doing back streets, whatever. And this chick literally walked right in, out in front of me with her earphones in, listening to whatever music or whatever, just didn't hear me. And I've come around a corner and she, she hadn't stopped to check. And I, I've walked, just pulled up a bee's dick away from it. Like it was so close, so close. But yeah, that's the other side of it. So yes, you did mention sedentary behavior. There's an increase in just sitting around behavior and a decrease in actually being physically active as well. So, you know, as well, must be. well yeah. You know, think about when we grew up. It was all outdoors. It was walk to yeah. school. It wasn't the huge heavy bags. We didn't, I mean, we just didn't have all the sporting gear. Like, we didn't have to have these great big rugby bags or big cricket bags or whatever. Plus our all our books, plus our laptops, plus our whatevers. It's it's full on. And then you have yeah. to be at school so early for before school practice or music practice or whatever. It's very different. I mean, we literally would walk to school at least a kilometre there and then the same back and then play outside. We didn't worry about yeah. coming at primary school, that was for sure. So it's Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had the access to the outdoors, which isn't around. So, you know, just by the way the world's changing, physical, um, just having the parks there and just playing outside, it, it's not like it used to be. And then sitting around, look at their homework. Their homework's online too. It's not as if um, everything is online. Even like they have, I know with my kids, I think it was in French or something, having online competitions with kids around the world. So there's, everything is encouraging online usage. Very addictive because it, um, you, you get lots of rewards. That's why it's addictive. Yeah. You get dopamine rewards. And, yeah. and that's been very hard for a teacher to compare compete with or a parent to teach, compete with for that matter so it also if there's any um attention deficit there in the genes it's going yep. to amplify yeah and it'll amplify it to the point where you have a problem well it's a major i mean to think already one in four one in four kids around the world well basically america canada here they're the steps that i looked up um and UK, one in four, it's huge. And Australia, within two years, they're saying one in three. Like, that's really scary. And 80% of adults. Whoa. I mean, we need to prevent yeah. what's going to happen down the track. It's not so much now. Yes, it's bad. But look at all those diseases we're talking about, like diabetes. Like Now, well, now you, you, had, um, you had a good quote, obesity is the new smoking. And if we go back to how that was reversed, Yep. Um, well, there were taxes, obviously, and they have an impact. But there was a social campaign yeah, around smoking, yeah. which yep. I think changed attitudes. And that's what I think would be good if the government had a social campaign. Well, why don't they put a bigger taxes on McDonald's and all the junk takeaway bullshit food? Well, yeah, I mean, there is a proposal to put a tax on sugar. Well, they should. It's a killer. Mm. It's probably the number one killer these days. Mm. There have been a couple of countries that have brought it in. Tax on sugar. I think in Mexico they had. Really? Tax on sugar? All that. Um, yeah. But I, I think there's also a place for some social engineering, government advertising. Oh, you know? definitely. When I was a kid, it was a rite of passage to drink and drive. <laughs> to drive when I was drunk, actually, if I'm honest. Say that again. It, so it was a rite of passage. It was, it was a rite of passage that we drove when we were drunk. Yeah. Which is now you wouldn't do it. No, that's right. There's been some social engineering around it. Yes, good point. I mean, that's like even today, they're, they're doing a massive crackdown on texting in cars. I think it's 5% yeah. of people are texting in cars and not just texting, they're watching movies and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. they're trying to change the behavior again by bringing in the hefty fines and, and now they're, they're getting undercover four wheel drives and motorbikes to. to try and catch you and look down on you as you're in the car mm. doing it. So people can change when it comes down to it. If it's going to hit the, the back pocket or affect their lifestyles. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So what, what are your tips from today, Sal? I think you've got a few tips. You've been doing some good work here today. Yes. Well, you know, it, it, without having to do much, if you've got a dog, walk your dog or walk your neighbor's dog. 
just get moving, get out of the house and, you know, be encouraged to do it. And I know I struggle with my kids with all this stuff, but when we had dogs, we used to walk them and, you know, we had a rotation system or whatever and they had to do it. That was no deal. Yeah. Like you didn't get all the other stuff until his, the, the chores were done. So, yeah. you know, it's getting you outdoors. A park is even better because walking a dog isn't going to stop and wee all the way. But if you get them to an off lead park, then they can run around and then you can do laps while they're doing it. That's yeah. very interesting. What else would I say? Oh, I'll put it down here somewhere. But um, reducing screen time, which is difficult. Yeah. And um, um, and even reducing, or maybe sometimes we were chatting with Shauna the other day about integrating a technology with movement, where she had her son on a BOSU playing his games. I thought that was awesome. That would be awesome. And the other system you can do to, to achieve that is a, is a system called Wife We Fit. Yes. You know, the Wii game platform. Well, there's a balance board which you can buy as part of that. Yeah, yeah. And the games involve balance. Yeah. And balance is, is, is um, a sensory pathway close to my heart because it, it helps learning. Yeah, I think that's awesome. So yeah. actually, yeah, if you integrate like your Wii games with the, yeah. the sport. And, I mean, of course, we, we said, what do you say, reducing screen time and get moving, but you've got to look at your diet. You've got to, like, you know, yeah. reduce what goes in to what goes out. So whatever activity you're doing and however many calories and whatever you're spending out of that, whatever you're putting in your mouth has to be less. Otherwise... But, but, it's, but it's interesting. Yeah, you say that. But yeah. if you're eating well... Yes. I went on this um I went on this detox diet. It was actually called um, oh, yeah, Dr. Yeah, yeah. And there were actually no limits on the amount you could eat. Mm -hmm. No limits at all. It was just what you ate. Mm. It has so to be dense, absolutely. But lots of veg lots of veggies, lots of roughage. Yeah. And you can actually eat until you feel very full. Stay away from the low fat. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's interesting. I don't know. There's the jury's out on that one because, uh, particularly doing the jury's out on on how much you can eat. I mean, yes, it's definitely what type of food, but yeah, veggies have them till the cows come home. But things like yeah, protein and fats, I don't know. That's another discussion. <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't need too many. You have to limit protein and fat, yes. absolutely. Oh, and then I'm with you. You can have as many. You can you can eat la. You can eat as much as you want if you've got that roughage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. You know, just yeah. take the white potatoes out and be careful with the sweet potato. But all the leafy greens have bucket loads of them. Yeah, all that. Spin. Brown rice, Brown. whole foods. Yeah, yeah. Foods. absolutely nothing out of a packet. Yeah. But you know, although um, sweet potatoes, you know. Maybe not too many, but they've got high in antioxidants. Oh, no, no, they're brilliant, but just not too much. I put turmeric yeah. on it and make them into chips for my kids, and they love nice. it. Love nice. it. Just, um, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, but yeah. Listen, Harry, this is a really interesting topic, and it really needs to be get more focus on it. And as you say, it really needs some social engineering behind it because... We are, I think, I haven't read, I can't, don't quote me on this, but I think this is the first generation of kids that won't be living as long as the generation. Correct. Of that is correct. Yeah. How, how freaking scary is that? And that's purely because of like diet and exercise. Mm. Mm. And that's true. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's quality of life. That is the important thing. Yeah. So yes, it's a shock that they're going to live shorter than generation before, but yeah. You know, are they going to live any happier? Addicted to screens? Probably not. Oh, and then all of the physical things that are going to happen, as well as the illnesses, but just, you know, carting your heavier body around and then your feeling and your mood and all that sort of stuff, it's all getting affected. And we are in one of our next episodes talking about the gut. And this links in heavily with the gut, with how it affects the, other, the overall being. The other thing, knees and ankles go and hips. Yeah, there's a, 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 an increased um, number of kids having knee and ankle reconstructions because they're too heavy playing sport mm. when they are playing with injuries, carrying yeah. around too much weight. So I never had any really reconstructions. No, I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> I didn't know anybody that had one. It's incredible. I, I can from primary school. There was one kid who had an ankle knee reconstruction and another mm. one who had an um, knee reconstruction, and that's under what yeah. the age of eleven. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, 
That's scary. So move, moderate screen time and munch good food. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, look, thank you so much for talking about this today, Harry, because it's just something I think we need to give more airplay to and get more awareness about and get people on board with like, shit, yeah, let's, let's change this, this and shift it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, all righty. Well, thank you very much. And yeah. I can't wait for next week. I think we're talking about the gut next week. I think we are. Yep. That might be a double. That's episode. this. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got one. It's what happens on the end part of it, though, that we want to know. Exactly. And that's why it makes you so happy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 The well, second brain. We're going to talk about the, the second, second brain. brain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. And if you um, like to leave a comment or, or share this and um, yeah, next week we'll be tuning in to talk about the gut. Can't wait for that one. And as always, I love spending some time chatting with you, Harry. It's always the highlight of my week. <laughs> You're too kind, so. <laughs> All right, well, go and have a lovely evening and I'll see you next week. Absolutely. Till then, bye. Bye.